G'day, welcome back to the Not So Weekly, Weekly Drone News and RC Model Aeroplane News. Got some stuff for you today, stay tuned to the end because I'm going to talk about remote ID. It's now a thing, it's now a thing in America that, that March the 16th has come and gone and now the FAA will be out there enforcing remote ID. What does this mean to you? Well, stay tuned and you might find out. Anyway, I'm going to look at a number of things. The first thing that I noticed was this. It's a laser beam being used to shoot down a drone. It's counter UAS is the terminology they use, or CUAS, everyone loves an acronym. Counter UAS looks like someone stuck a Phantom 4 on their mantelpiece in the living room and fired a laser beam at it. <laughs> but really it was a scientific test. And uh, you can see footage of the drone in the air being hit by the laser beam. My goodness, isn't that fantastic? However, it strikes me that if you were a bad actor trying to do something evil and there was a drone, a, you know, a laser beam there to shoot your drone down. All you do is build a flying disco ball. Yeah, flying disco ball from the 70s. There must be a whole lot of disco tech somewhere with these things lying in the corner. Grab one of those, put some props on it, away you go. Problem solved. In fact, the, the word friendly fire, or the term friendly fire would have a whole new meaning as that disco ball bounced the laser beams back at the people who were firing them. So it's a, it's a good proof of concept, but I don't think it's really going to be a particularly valuable weapon in the battlefield because the other problem you've got is that Sometimes it's foggy, sometimes it's raining, and, and both of those things will completely screw up your directed energy weapon if it's using a light as the energy. So it has a limited field of application. I don't know that it would be worth the enormous cost that it probably is going to they'll charge people for this thing, but I just saw it. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, something worth looking at. Oh yes, and the media continues to vilify our hobby. I saw this uh, Business Insider article where the, apparently the USA is unprepared for the swarms of drones being operated by bad actors. Apparently you're all in danger in the USA. You're all going to die as a result of these swarms of drones, possibly even driven by AI. It's only a matter of time. It's just around the corner. Regulate, ban, oh, I don't know. But yeah, the, the media is again searching for clicks, searching for ad views. This is what they do. They make stuff up and then try and scare the public into fearing for their lives and therefore supporting all manner of drone regulations that we really don't need. In Australia, apparently a story has been published which says that there are now more people with drone licenses than with pilots licenses. That's right, there are more drone operators than manned aviation pilots. So that's a good thing, isn't it? It's probably the same in the USA, to be totally honest, because they reckon there's over a million drones in the USA. And if you're doing Part 107, you've got it, or you're not flying recreationally, you have to have a Part 107. So I wonder, I should do the do some research, but I haven't, I'm lazy. <laughs> but this, this story basically says that um, you know, drone, licensed drone operators outnumber licensed general aviators in Australia now. So it's about time we had more of a size and it's about time they listen to the drone operators over and above the manned aviators because we are the larger force. We are the, in a democracy, you know, it's, it's rule of the majority, isn't it? Well, there we go. I doubt that things will change. I'm pretty sure that drone operators will still be considered to be a little more than pond scum in the eyes of regulators, but that's just the way the world is, I'm afraid. And Boeing continues to have problems. Oh, God, could it get any worse for Boeing? Yes, it could. Apparently, a panel fell off uh, a, a Boeing airliner. It landed safely, but b bits are still falling off these airliners. Bits are still falling off these planes. Whether it's due to bad design or a lack of maintenance, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. 50 people were injured in a flight to New Zealand when a, uh, a Boeing aircraft took a sudden nosedive. And that apparently was because the, it's so f that the indication is that the, a faulty switch on the back of the pilot's seat. And apparently there was a directive to check and replace those switches, but the airline involved probably didn't get it, didn't do it, saving money. I don't know what the story was, but anyway, uh, 50 people injured, some requiring hospitalization for broken bones. Seriously, what's happened to, to the aviation industry? It used to be safe, super safe, and now I'm not quite so sure. It's, it's not very good. Right, and remote ID, okay, it is the subject of the week, isn't it? And the first thing to note is I saw this article which says that 70% of major drone manufacturers haven't got compliant products on the market yet. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, it's a bit of a, again, this is the media making stuff look worse than it is because yeah, 70% of major drone manufacturers, but really there's only one major drone manufacturer, isn't there? It's DJI, certainly from the recreational perspective. And DJI's drones are largely compliant, but um, other manufacturers, not quite so. But even then actually, it's, it's interesting because they, it's self-certification, isn't it? Just like Boeing, you know, we, we'll just say we're compliant and you'll trust us. Well, apparently, no. <laughs> apparently some of the claims are not um, what they appear to be. We have some drone manufacturers making claims that are not necessarily true. So again, 
Why on earth, FAA, you are paid to do a job. Why are you basically handing that task on to the people who you're supposed to regulate? Boeing, drone manufacturers, um, uh, remote ID module manufacturers. You're just relying on their honesty. And I think that has proven so far to be a pretty um, flawed policy. Maybe you should revisit that. Uh, FAA based on recent events. I don't know. But anyway, that article says 70% of drone manufacturers aren't ready for red. That doesn't mean that 70% of drones aren't ready. It just means 70% of manufacturers. And also speaking, oh, by the way, before I go, was um, Boeing, something really dis disturbing I saw was that the whistleblower, this guy in, who worked for Boeing for decades, and he blew the whistle on some rather unsafe practices using parts from the scrap bin to finish aircraft because there was a lack of availability of proper parts, things like that. So he, he blew the whistle. And of course, I don't think Boeing was particularly impressed with that, but he was about to give more evidence in a trial, a court hearing that's going on, but suddenly he turned up dead. And he'd warned, uh, I think it was a friend or a sister saying, I'm not going to commit suicide. If I die, I haven't committed suicide yet. Now they're saying it was a suicide. He, 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 you know, he debrained himself with a handgun. And, but he said he wouldn't do that. And he warned that his life was in danger and that if he was found dead, it you know, wasn't perhaps what it appeared to be. So what do we think? Because remember, there are billions of dollars on the line here with Boeing and, and the, the associated industries. Uh, money has a lot of power, a lot of influence. You can buy a lot of hitmen. I'm not saying Boeing would have this guy killed, certainly not, because they, they issued a press release saying they were deeply saddened by the, by the whistleblower's demise. I'm sure they all um, had a big cry that uh, the guy that was supposed to give evidence to prove their wrongdoing is now dead for some reason. Purely coincidence, maybe. But the state of the aviation, the manned aviation industry, certainly commercial passenger aviation, it is an utter and total mess. And the FA, do you know why? Do you know why it's such a mess? Well, I asked AI. AI knows everything, you know. It's the, it's the thing. Everyone, you know, AI, turn to AI for everything. So I went onto a popular free AI chatbot and said, hey, tell me why it is that manned aviation is in such a sorry state right now. Give, give me some inside information. You know, you've, you've scanned all the documents, you've trawled the internet, you've scraped all the web pages, looked at the news. Tell me why it is that manned aviation is such a, in such a sad state. Why that you know aircraft and airliners are in trouble and airlines are in trouble. Tell me what the problem is. And I thought, no, that's going to just give me pages and pages of quotes from news stories and things. No, no. I thought, let's make it simple. I said, draw me a picture. You know, pictures worth a thousand words. Draw me a picture that shows why we're having these problems. And the little wheel spun around the AI thing. It was thinking real hard, and I thought, no, it's not going it, to. It's taking a long time. Probably going to come back and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. But but to its credit, it provided, it painted a picture which shows exactly what the problem is. I'm going to show you that picture now. Here it is. Do you see what it says? Let me explain a little. The big gorilla is the FAA. Of course they're a big gorilla. They've got all the power in the world, backed by the government, the might of the government. You know, they can fine you, they can do all sorts of things. Um, so there's the gorilla, the FAA gorilla. And behind him, there's a, an airliner plunging in flames. But the gorilla's not concerned. He's not paying attention to that. That's not as his concern. He's looking, what's he got in his hand? He's got a tiny drone. That's right. Drones are the danger. Drones are the problem. Drones seem to be where the FAA is focusing its attentions to the cost of public safety in passenger aviation. I think the, the AI, whether that's true or not, it certainly sums up the perception that many in the hobby have right now, that the, the, the FAA is too busy focusing on things that don't matter, like remote ID. We're going to enforce remote ID. Oh, seriously, deal with the real problems, the Boeings that are falling apart over a head. And here's a little tip for you. If you're ramp checked, and if you don't know what ramp checked is, it's when the FAA roll up and demand to see that you're compliant with all their rules and regulations. If you are ramp checked by someone from the FAA who says, you've got a drone, is it, does it have remote ID? And if they find it doesn't have remote ID and they say, why do you not have working remote ID on your drone? Simply say, look, I'm sorry, Kevin, <laughs> but... I did have a really good remote ID module. I left it outside yesterday and a piece of Boeing fell on it and destroyed it. So I can't use it. They'll believe that. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it sounds to me like a good idea anyway. So yeah, um, and what's gonna happen with remote ID? What, what, 
are they are they out there policing it? Do we have FAA, you know, um, SWAT teams trawling all the parks and the, and the the schoolyards looking for people without remote ID? No, we don't. Of course, we don't. They're, they're all inside drinking coffee, eating donuts. That's what that's what government employees tend to do quite a lot of the time. But um, so, are we safe? Well, to be honest, this is how I see it going down. Non-compliance with remote ID will be an ancillary charge. An ancillary offence. That means if you're not doing anything else wrong, you're not attracting public attention, you're not you know, causing injury or risk to anyone else or damaging their property, then it doesn't matter if you're using remote ID. No, no one's going to give a damn. But, but if you are caught doing something stupid, like flying at an airport or um, you know, endangering people's lives by you know, just zooming up and down in a busy um, park or something when there's too many people around, then when they charge you with all these other offences, they'll add non-compliance with remote ID as a further $1,500 fine. So they'll just add it on, just it's the icing on the cake, it's the, you know, it's the cream. They'll just add it on. They're not going to actively go out policing it, but if you don't have it and they catch you doing something else, they will ping you for it. So does that mean you should make sure you've got remote ID? Well, you know, that's entirely a personal choice. You can always go sub 250. I see Bot Grinders put out a video saying, you know, sub 250 is great, although the comments, everyone says, nah, five inch. <laughs> and the, one of the big problems is that um, a lot of people still want to fly five inch and five inch is not sub 250. Or even as hard as Tommy might try to make a sub 255 incher, it's going to have flaws and weaknesses that a regular five incher doesn't have. So people will still be flying five, and a half, five inch freestylers, freestyle drones and without remote ID. And as long as you're doing it out of the way, out of the public eye, without attracting the attention of law enforcement or other people, you're going to be fine. I reckon you'll be totally fine. But uh, And remember all the, all the, all the real potential problem elements. The, the DJI camera drone operators who've just got their drone out of the box from Best Buy and want to go and film the local airport, they've got remote ID built in. That's, that's going to work for the FAA and, and all other law enforcement. They'll be able to track down the idiots who don't know what they're doing or the ones who choose to do things on purpose to upset, annoy or damage other people's property. They'll get caught, which is great. But us, the, the hobby, the true hobby, the guys that build their drones, that fly them 50 feet above the ground, not 500 feet, who fly in bandos and deserted parks and so forth, we are not going to have too much of a problem with remote ID because, to be honest, I don't think the FAA gives a damn. Um, too many cups of coffee and too many boxes of donuts to worry about before remote ID becomes a real issue on its own. So there you go, that's pretty much, I think, everything I wanted to cover today. Anyway, that's it. That's another week's um, drone news-ish. And so if you've got anything you want to know, any, I'll put comment links in the description. I remembered last week, try and do it this week as well, so that you can go and find out more information about the stories I've spoken about here. And if you come across an interesting story, fire me a message, let me know, uh, and I'll include it in next week's drone news if it's relevant. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. Remember, look, no mid-rolls. Thank you, Patreon supporters. Thank you, channel members. You make that possible. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!